So last week I took you guys out on the water with me to test out my DIY foot pedal mount for my MotorGuide XI3 trolling motor. We on the water, we did some tests and I figured out that the angle needed to be much steeper and that it had too much squish to the pedal. After I got home from work every day this week, I have built version two, I guess you would call it. And we're gonna try it out, probably not in today's video, but today I do wanna go over how I built the new one. And next week I will get out on the water with it again and we'll give it a shot and see how much better version two is over version one. But also in today's video, I'm gonna be running some wires and adding a USB port dash panel at the front of my kayak, mainly because my front facing camera the one that I film off the front of the bow of the boat kind of faces me. I want to be able to run that off all day power because I find myself, I leave that one running all day anyway, and I find myself having to change those GoPro batteries out a lot. And if I can just plug it into my Dakota Lithium that I have mounted inside of my boat, run it off that all day, I shouldn't have any issues. So today I'm going to show you guys how I go about locating where I want to put my ports in my boat, how I go about running my wires, and we're going to tie it into my yak power system that I've already got installed on this boat. So I'll be able to push your switch, turn the power on to that port. If I'm not running a camera and I don't want power there, I can turn it off at the yak power system. So y'all stick around. What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name's TJ, welcome to Kayak USA. So last week, like I just said, I took you guys with me out on the water and we tested out version one of my foot pedal install. Now to get you caught up, if you haven't seen any of these videos, when I fish from a bass boat and I can operate my motor guide, I can operate it around the lake, I can hit spot lock, I can do everything and keep my rod and reel in both hands. I can go around docks, I can do whatever I need to do with the trolling motor and take my boat where I need it just by using my foot. And once you do it so many years, it becomes just natural. You can zip around the dock, you can go in and out of sloughs with no problem, you can fish exactly where you want. When I bought the XI3 for this kayak, it comes with a remote, but it doesn't come with a foot pedal. And I used it for a season last year and I was able to you know, get pretty decent at operating it with my remote. I kind of mounted it on the side of my seat here. But the problem I was having was fishing docks, you know, trying to get around a dock, get in and out of tight places with the kayak. Once you cast, these kayaks, they kind of drift really fast. So if you're beside a dock and you want to flip all the way to the back of one, by the time you get your, your lure to the back and you have to start reeling it, your boat needs to be adjusted. So you have to let go, reach over, hit the button and kind of guide your kayak where you need it. Then you got to catch back up and it, and it causes for some not good cast and not good fishing around piers and tight places where you want to fish. Therefore, I ordered me an XI3 foot pedal off Amazon and I figured that I would find a way to incorporate incorporate it into my kayak. So the first version, if you watched last week's video, I used a wheel chalk. Now this is just a cheap wheel chalk that I had laying around the shop, but I needed something to get the foot pedal at the angle that I needed because when you're in a bass boat, you're standing above it and the foot pedal can be flat on the ground. But when you're in a kayak, you have to operate that foot pedal from a seated position. Well, the first attempt, this is kind of version one I've got in my hands here. I had the pedal mounted to this. We attached this to my Hobie cassette and it made it quick to attach. I could pop this thing in and out, no problem. But the issues that we ran into last week when we did the initial test on it was the plastic was a little spongy and it caused me to have to really push really hard to get the trolling motor to turn the way I needed it to turn. Also, the angle was just not enough. You know, we're, we're seated down in a seat and the foot pedal's right in front of us. It needs to be not vertical, but really close to a 45 degree angle so that your, your foot just lays natural. And the problem we were having here was it was so, you know, extended out when I wanted to push the front of it, I was having to point my toe really hard forward and get it to push down. So this is what I come up with today. Let me show you guys. I've changed it, this is version two. So let me get the old GoPro here, here we go. This is version two and I have modified it a, a good bit. I'll pull it out here, but as you can see, I've added a, this is two Ram balls. I already had this Ram ball mounted on the front of my kayak and it used to be a camera mount spot for me. And I've, since I already had the Ram ball there, I noticed that when I made this new attachment that 
The cassette does have some play back and forth, some kind of flop. I'll show you really quick. So if I take this off, get off of there. All right, so now you can see that, see that play I've got in it? And you can probably see it on that camera too. And that's just the cassette flopping around inside the latches. But what I come up with is this bad boy right here. This is made out of quarter inch PVC board. And I just, I kind of showed you at the end of last week's video how this started, how I made half a box. And then I kind of cut it down to fit the, the shape or the dimensions of the cassette here, the Hobie cassette. You see how I kind of cut it down? I stuck some stickers on it, kind of pretty it up, but it's not the best looking thing in the world, but it works. And I think it's gonna work really good. Now I hadn't got a chance to take it on the water. Hopefully I'll do that tomorrow and we'll put it in next week's video. And I'm really wanting this version to work. I made it solid. We changed the angle, as you can see, it's way different. Let me pull it up on this other camera. I mean, that's the angle that we, we were at, let's see, something like that. So we have really just, we've almost doubled the pitch that we had going there. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna set this to the side today. For today's video, we're gonna do some wiring. Like I said at the beginning, we're gonna run some wire, add some USB ports, but I did wanna show you guys my new version. Now, the way I built this, if you, know, if you have any detailed questions on this or you're wanting to actually try this in your Hobie, hit me up in the comments, I'll help you out the best I can. But this is just PVC board, quarter inch thick, basically uh, cutting board. You know, if you can get a really thick cutting board and you can cut it up, it's the same stuff. It's solid as a rock. I did bolt it in the corners. At first I just had it PVC welded. And when I went to put everything together, the way I attached it to my, my cassette is really heavy duty Velcro. So I got the bottom of the base that I built covered in one side of the Velcro and the cassette in the other. And when I put it together the first time, I didn't have it bolted, it was just welded and glued. And I snapped this thing right in, you know, every weak spot just popped right off. So I had to go back and bolt it. That's what kind of gave me the idea to put in the Ram ball here. So now I can lock it in with one of these little Yak Attack wishbones right here on both of these Ram balls. We can lock it in place and I think this is gonna work out great. I can't wait to use this sucker. So. But that's going to be for next week's video. I wanted you guys to see it. And it's not heavy. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's heavy for what it is. But like you can see, I can pop this thing out, throw it in my truck, and throw my Mirage Drive system in here, and it's not going to be an issue at all. I didn't have to modify my boat at all. I didn't have to drill any extra holes. All of this is just Velcroed straight to a Hobie cassette. And if I don't want to take it, I don't have to take it. I can just leave it at home. So I love it. Hopefully it's going to work out great. We'll find out next week. To the wiring of the old banana boat here. We're going to set up, I'm going to drill some holes. I'm going to show you guys the tools that I use to drill holes, what I do to run wires through these holes of this, uh, these kayaks when I do this, and how I go about measuring and getting the right angles of these plates. So what I usually go with, I got one right here. And I'm gonna take you guys to the bench and show you all, everything that I use when I'm wiring up one of these. And I'll have links for everything in the video description below. You can always remember, if you wanna follow along with these DIY builds that I do here on the channel, I have a website. It is www.kit.co forward slash kayak USA. It's linked in the video description of all my videos. You can click it. And on that homepage, I've got every one of my videos that I built something or I modified something or I added something to my kayak. You can click that video build and it'll have a list with links to Amazon or wherever I got everything in that video and you can just go straight there and get it. So if you didn't know that, now you do. If you wanna follow along, I'll have links to all of that. Just use my personal link. It'll take you there, Amazon, whatever, wherever I found it, eBay, and you'll get, what you, you'll get exactly what I got. So these are what I go with when I am installing dash panels and kayaks, USB ports. You can get them with four holes, you can get them with five holes, you can get them one. But what I like to do is I buy a pack of these plates and you can get them where they're singles, threes and fours. And I just got a whole pack laying around. And then I order these USB plugs kind of in bulk. You can get them dirt cheap. And once you get, you know, I got a drawer full of these here at the house. You can get different color LED lights. Today we're gonna be putting red color and we're gonna do a two-face instead of just one USB port. I did want to add a voltage meter, so we'll be able to. I'll be able to flip the switch on and look 
straight at the front of my hole and tell how much battery juice I got left in the old Dakota lithium under the seat here. And it'll help me out a lot too, just in case I start using too much of my battery, because this is gonna go to the same battery that I run my Garmin on. If I'm running a camera and I see my battery getting a little bit low, I can just turn the camera off, you know, turn power off to this port and make sure I save enough juice for the Garmin. But with that Dakota lithium, I'm never gonna have to worry about it. I think I got a 24 amp hour that runs just the Garmin by itself and the little bit of lights that we have on this boat. So it's not gonna be an issue at all. I'm gonna run all of this to my Yak Power system. I'll show you that up close in just a minute. But first, let's go over to the bench. We'll get together everything that we need to do. I'm gonna cut some wires, get everything kind of pre-wired up on the bench. Then we'll come over here and I'll show you the tools I use to drill holes and measure you know, where I'm gonna put these things. So let's go over to the workbench. All right, so this is basically everything that I grab whenever I'm wiring up someone's kayak or I'm adding USB ports in a kayak. So this is a fish tape that I grab. I won't need it in today's video, but I did wanna show it to you. If you're ever running wires from one end of a kayak to the other and you just can't get your arm in there to grab the wire, these things work great. This is just a cheap electrician's fish tape where it's got a stiff wire that you can run through a pipe or a, bo a boat hole. That's why I bought this one. And you can fish your wires all the way through without having to try to rig up some way to do it. They work really good. I won't need it today because I can reach the wires that we're running, but they work great. We are gonna be tying into the Yak Power System of this kayak, like I mentioned. If you've never installed a Yak Power System, what it is is a, it's a dash panel on the side you, it's push button and you can control different parts of the boat all from that one dash panel. Like mine, I can turn my bow lights on, I can turn my inside LED lights on, I can turn my Garmin on just by pushing certain buttons. So we're gonna be adding this to, I think my last available button that I have on there. And, but it's gonna be great. I'll be able to operate it with a push of a button and turn power on to this dash panel that we're installing. What this is in my hand is what we're gonna use to run the wire. This is a Yak Power SAE port adapter. So this, the way this one's designed is I should be able to just plug this into my Yak Power system that's already in the boat. And if I wanted to, I could just mount this up. And what this is, it's the female side of an SAE port. So if I wanted to run an extra SAE port, I could just run this wire. What I'm gonna use this for today is we're gonna cut this female end off. I'm gonna leave a little bit on there so I can reuse this later. I'm not gonna just waste it. But I'm gonna cut this off and we're gonna use the wire because it's just long enough for me to not have to cut and splice my own wire. We can run it straight up to the panel we're putting in and tie into the boat without having to do a whole lot of modifications to the Yak Power system at all. So that's why I've got this here. This is what I just mentioned to you guys just a second ago. This was the variety bag that I ordered off Amazon of these little dash panels. So this is my last two hole and that's what we're gonna put in today. But if I only wanted to put in this little dual USB port that we're installing today, I could just go with a one hole like this. Just drill a single hole, use this plate, it makes it nice and clean and I could mount the USB port that way. I wanna do a two hole because I found this you know, voltage meter in my drawer with the rest of this stuff, and I really wanted to be able to control or you know, keep an eye on my battery like I mentioned a while ago. So that's why we're doing this today. Now, I do wanna show you before we start cutting this wire, another trick that I like to do when I'm wiring up stuff in a kayak. A lot of this stuff, if you're a piddler like me or you like adding stuff throughout you know, time, you like changing stuff, like I change stuff every day that I do. So I don't wanna have to go back and cut wire when I'm doing it. And in order to add two different ports like this, you know, a voltage meter and USB port, I would have to, I'm gonna have to jump my wire from one port to the next port and then my hot wires are gonna go from there to the Yak power system. If I ever wanna take this out, and if I just crimp wires and hook them and butt splice them together, I would have to cut wires and stuff like that. I don't like doing that. So I bought these T-TAP splice wires, splice wire connectors, I'm sorry. But I'm gonna have everything linked, like I said, it'll be in its own little basket or whatever, and you can go find this stuff. All of this stuff I've actually got off Amazon, so they're easy to you know, click on and go get. But what these are, these are just T connectors and I'll show you how they work really quick. You get three different sizes for three different size wire when you order this little variety pack that I ordered. And what you get, what am I looking for? Here we go. So you get a T for the wire you need. Let's see if I can get it to focus it, focus it, get off my face, there we go. See how it's got a little clamp right there? And what you do is you clamp that onto the wire. So if we're gonna tap into our hot wire on our boat, once we, once we plug these in, 
we're gonna have a, a loose hot wire and a loose ground. I'm gonna use this tap and we're going to tap in to our hot wire and then we're gonna use our red wire from our dash panel and we're gonna hook it to one of these guys here. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. Is, and what that does is once we clamp to it, these plug and unplug together. So we'll be able to plug these up and unplug them. So if this dash pedal, panel ever goes bad, if I ever get water in it, if something happens, I'll be able to unplug it, change them out without having to cut the wires and re-butt splice everything inside the boat. So if you do all your wiring outside of the boat, as much as you can anyway, whenever you go to install it inside, it's just plug and play and you don't have to kind of crawl in there and try to cut and splice wires inside of a hole. It's just thinking ahead and because I know I change stuff a lot, I know eventually I'm going to need to unplug this butt splice and add more to it or whatever. So that's what we're going to use. Links for all this stuff that I'm using will be below. I grabbed a little bit of 14 gauge wire. I got some red and some black. I just kind of ran it off a spool. We're going to use it today. And that's about it. I mean, it's really easy. Another trick, if you're drilling holes in your kayak to mount stuff like this, you're gonna want a step bit. This is just a cheap step bit. I probably got this one from Harbor Freight because they're so cheap there, but you can also get them on Amazon. You can get different sizes. This one goes from, I wanna say a quarter inch hole all the way to an inch and three eighths. And what I like to do when I'm installing these things is I'll measure the outside of the you know, the SAE port, I mean, or the USB port that we're installing, I'll, I'll get an outside the diameter because that's the hole size we need to be. You don't want to be bigger than that. You don't want it flopping around in the boat. You want it as tight as you can get it. So I take and I measure the outside of this. I keep it on that same size. Then I come over here to my step bit and I slide it down until it touches on both sides. And we know that we need to drill the hole an inch and seven thirty seconds. So this just slides right in there. And what I'll do to go further with that is I'll take a red marker and I'll mark on this step bit where I need to stop when I'm drilling. So when I'm drilling into the boat, you'll be able to see that red line. And as soon as that red line gets to where it starts to disappear into the boat, I know I need to stop. And that's exactly how deep we need to go to get this mounted. So let's get it wired up. Let's get some holes drilled in this banana boat and get this thing hooked up so we can do some fishing tomorrow. I'm ready. All right, we got her plugged into the Yak Power system now. I'm just gonna slide it over to the side. It looks like a mess, but it's really not. Everything's kind of zip tied where it needs to be. And then I've got my Dakota lithium battery. You can see it's the 23 amp hour. It's Velcroed to a wall back right up under my seat. We drop our Hobie box back in the middle. And now here is what controls everything in my boat. So. You can turn the power on and off. I had it on. There we go, we're back on. 
So number one, I have hooked up to my Garmin. I'll just show you really quick. So my Garmin is off, but I've got the Garmin set up so that as soon as it has power ran to it, it boots up so I don't ever have to touch the power button to the Garmin. So what I do is I come over here, mash number one, the Garmin boots up. My B, I have wired into my bow lights. So if I hit B, as you can see, my bow lights turn on. Now these are Yak Power uh, red and green bow lights or navigation lights, whatever you want to call them. Those are wired into the B. The M I have wired into these blue lights. Now in the dark, it gives me so much light. I've got four of them. One, two, three, and four. And they light up this entire area in the front of my boat. So when I'm rigging up and it's right before daylight and I'm trying to tie something on, I can hit that. It's blue, so it's not too overly bright in my face. And I can use those lights to, to rig up lures and stuff before I get out on the water. All right, let's turn those off. Let's turn my bow lights off. You can see my Garmin, she's booted up and ready to go. I can hit one, turn my Garmin back off. The S I already have hooked up. I've got some rear lights I just installed on the boat. And I'll show you really quick. It's the same blue lights that I have on the inside. I've got one there and one there. I really just do it so if I am running in the dark, I've got my big Yak Power pole light. This is the light that I run. I think I said Yak Power, it's Yak Attack, I mean. I've got my flag and it's got the light on the top and I usually just stick it back here in one of my rod tubes in the back before, you know, once the sun comes up, I take it down. But I also like to run those side lights. They, they're really bright. They put a good glow off on the back of the boat. You're, it's very, it makes you very visible at night. And that was my S, and the number two is the one we just wired into. And as you can see, there is no power to our new little port we got right here. But if we come over here, hit number two, bam. Tells us we've got 13.2, 13.3 volts in our Dakota Lithium right now. We pop this little waterproof door up. We've got two five volt, 2.1 amp USB ports that I can tie in perfectly so that whenever I want to add the camera to the front, this is what I run. This is the Yak Attack. This was the long one. I actually shortened it down. I took it apart and it was two different pieces that you could kind of swivel. And I, if I had them close, I'd show them to you, but I don't know where they're at. But I took it apart because I didn't want it that far off the front of my boat. And I just shortened it up so that I could pop it here and I could lock it on get a good steady image for you guys when I'm filming or you know talking to you guys on the camera. And I want that camera looking at me right in the face. But now I can hook this up, pop my GoPro in, plug it in, run it down here, plug it up to USB and run it off the boat. I don't have to climb up there and swap batteries out all day long. It's not gonna be that much juice. I don't think it's gonna be a big drain on the Dakota Lithium. And if it turns out that just you know, this camera is a problem. I can always add a smaller, like a 10 amp hour battery in the boat. Those Dakota Lithiums, they weigh nothing. So I'll throw one of those in the boat, plug it up, and I should never have an issue. But I don't think I will with this one either. So that is perfect. So I'm super excited now that I can just run that. I don't have to carry a bunch of different batteries because I already carry my, the, my chest is a GoPro 10. So they take different batteries than my five that I use on the front of my boat and I have to carry all these different batteries when I go out. Now I just have to carry the one, you know, the GoPro 10 for my chesty and I'll swap that out. And if I wanted to add all day power to it, I can, I could plug it up on my chesty, but it's easy just to flip it forward and swap the battery out real quick. So now this is just one less thing I have to worry about. It's a nice clean install, watertight. We're not gonna have any issues. It's out of the way. It looks good in the front of the boat and now I've got a functioning piece. I'm just making this kayak more and more functional. A lot of people give me a lot of crap sometimes on Facebook when they see pictures of my boat and I'm rigged out ready to go fishing. Fully rigged, it looks like there's a lot on here. But everything that I've put on here, I have actually used, I've thought about. Like I just don't, 
I try not to just do something as soon as I get the idea. I really research every little thing that I add to this boat to make it better. It has to be functional and it has to look good. I don't want something to just look, you know, out of place on the boat. Now I can power my camera. It's nice, it's flush, it's out of the way. My Garmin's here. I know you are gonna ask me about this, but I did uh, mount this Bluetooth speaker up, up under my little Garmin on this. I've turned this little Hobie rail right here that I added into like a multifunctional rail. And I'm getting a lot of use out of it, I like it. I use it for my Garmin, my camera pole, my cup holder, and now I added my Bluetooth speaker. And when I'm just out fishing and I'm not really filming, I can listen to music and I don't have to worry about copyright issues or anything like that. I love having that Bluetooth speaker. I can sing it to my phone as soon as I get on the boat, hit play on my playlist and just fish. And I really enjoy that. So I did mount that. It's just mounted to the Hobie rail using a Hobie mount with them flat plates. I screwed it on. It's the H2O water jacket, I think. It'll, I'll link it with all this other stuff if y'all are interested, but I'm good. Now, today, I'm gonna finish the rest of the day getting ready to go fishing because I'm testing this out. We're gonna film this. It won't be this video, but I'm going to test this out in the morning. I'm going to finish my evening rigging up fishing rods, getting stuff ready, because last week when I did the first trial run with you guys, I didn't bring a whole lot of fishing equipment. I did bring some rods and I just kind of goofed off. I really wanted to practice and dial this in. I, I want to do some fishing now. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to have everything ready. We're going to hook up to the truck and probably be filming next week's video for you guys tomorrow. It's supposed to be great weather. I want to go find some fish. I want to spend the whole day on the water. Now I've got the camera. All I got to take is extra SD cards with me and I'll just roll it. If I catch any good fish, I'll have, I'll have proof that I caught the fish. That's why people ask me, why do you got GoPros? Well, I'm a YouTuber, but also I want proof that I caught the fish and I can just delete the proof when I don't catch the fish, you know. But I'm gonna finish rigging up today, guys. I, I really enjoy rigging this boat out with you guys. If you've got any suggestions that you wanna see me add, uh, odds are I've already done it. I've done a ton of mods on my channel. If you are new here, be sure to go check out my channel. I've got videos on everything. This is like my 10th or 15th boat that I have fully rigged out on this channel. And I've done every mod a little bit different to different kayaks. We've done Hobies, we've done natives we've done you know all every kayak you can think of i've just about had in the shop and we've done some sort of mod to it so check it out if you hadn't checked those out if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and i will catch you guys next thursday at two o'clock peace